Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of creating a digital audio synthesizer using C Sharp. In this part, we'll be adding some basic functionality to the really simple and bare bones synthesizer we made in the previous part by implementing multiple different waveforms that the synthesizer can use, which we'll be able to select while the synthesizer is running. So, welcome back to the basic synthesizer project. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is implementing some user interface using Windows Forms. Because what I want to achieve for this, just this blank form, is I want to achieve the massive style type of way of synthesizing, which is using the three oscillators. Because now we can't just rely on changing the frequency in the code, we want to be able to change it on the actual form, which is why we've used a Windows form. So if you remember, the oscillators are massive, there were three of them, I want there to be three on this synthesizer, but they add a, it's sort of like a... Each oscillator had a bunch of controls inside of it, like there were a bunch of dials, like the wavetable position and the amplitude and the wave, the wave form box, if you remember. So I want to achieve the kind of same look in this program. So the way we should go about doing this is, if you look here, there's a control called a group box. Now for those that don't know, a group box is a control that, say you drag some items into it, some other controls, now we can move the items anywhere, but what happens when we move the group box while these are inside of it? They move as well. This is because the group box it acts as a parent control. Whereas instead of, say if you dragged a button out here, the button's parent would be the form, the basic synthesizer form. And all these other controls are children to this form. But not the controls that are in this group box because the group box is the parent to these two controls here. So these two controls follow around where the group box goes. So what I want to do is create a new object or new control that derives from this group box. So we've got it called oscillator. We'll say it's a public. And to inherit from the group box control, we'll first need to use system.windows.forms namespace and then we can simply inherit from group box. So now oscillator inherits all the functionality of a standard group box. For example if we were to register the new control you'll see it appears here oscillator. And once we drag it it's just the exact same apart from it has text here. But that's just been the same as a group box with different text is useless. We actually need to give it some functionality. So we want some controls inside of it. So to do this, create a constructor. And inside of it, we're going to add some controls. So the first controls we want to add are the five buttons that we'll be using to select the waveform we want the oscillator to generate. So to do this, go to this.controls.add for a new control and put new button and assign some properties to it. So for this first one, we'll just do the signed. So we want the name to be signed. We want the location to be a new, we'll just use system.drawing. So we don't have to type the namespace each time. So a new point. We want this to be in the top left because it's the first one. So we can give it something like 1015. It's a decent location. And we can want the text to be the same as the name. So just sign. And the size we'll need as well. Put a comma. Uh, give it a decent size. Something like maybe 50-30. That gives enough room for stuff like the text. And now let's test this out. So if we rebuild the class and then add the oscillator in. There it's got a sign button. Now all we need to do is add the other five or the other four. One for sine, saw, square, triangle, and noise. So simply all we need to do is copy this con this dot controls to add for all the five buttons we need. So I've created the other four buttons we need. Feel free to pause and copy all the different point values. But notice how I've removed the size property assignment from all these. This is because we're gonna create a for each loop. And we're going to loop over all the five controls we added. So simply do a for each and go to this.controls. 
and inside of this loop we're just going to assign some properties that are going to be generic over all of these buttons so they're all going to be the same so for example control.size we can have the the size that we assigned before so 50 30 and we also want the font because i noticed that some some of the text on for example square and triangle where the words quite has quite a lot of characters we can assign a smaller font so use the standard font used by other controls so microsoft sans serif i believe and set the font to 6.75 that's a decent size value and the float and now once we build this and assign a new oscillator we'll see that we have all the five buttons we need drag it out and remove the oscillator text we don't need that so now we have a something that actually looks sort of like an oscillator so now we've got this oscillator on the form but when we click the buttons it doesn't actually do anything what we really want it to be doing is assigning the oscillators or the waveform that the oscillator will be using so the way I'm thinking about doing this is implementing an enum or defining one in the namespace the base synthesizer namespace so public enum waveform and inside this enum we want the all the waves we'll be using so sine, square, saw, triangle and noise now with this waveform we'll go back to oscillator we'll declare a new property so down here it'll be a public waveform and just call it waveform and it'll just be an auto property so get and private set because we won't be, we won't be setting this anywhere outside of the oscillator class because it'll be these controls that decide how it's set so now we've got this waveform property how do we actually change it? Well, the way I'm thinking of doing this is adding a method. We'll do this under the property. And it'll actually be an event handler for the click event on any of the wave buttons. So it'll be a private void wave button underscore click. So we know it's definitely a click event. And to comply with the event handler delegate, we need to declare an object as the sender in the parameters and event arguments e this is only so once we assign this method to the event handle for click that it will allow this because it needs these two parameters here it's just how delegates work so inside this function we want to cast the sender to a button so button button equals button sender just so we don't have to cast it throughout the rest of the function and what we want to do is cast this or parse the the text of the because the text is the same as the waveforms so sine square saw triangle noise sine square saw triangle and noise and what we want to do is parse the text of the button that's been pressed to the actual enum value so what this means is say we press the sign the sign button see the text here is a string of sign well this can be parsed to this value sign here because the string is the exact same as the value or the enum identifier so to do this we'll clear this dot waveform so assign the property we declared before and we can do the enum dot parse method so the parameters it needs is the type of the enum we cast into so simply use the type of and then the enum so waveform and then the string we want to try and parse to so button dot text so it's the text of a button we won't need to try parse because the text definitely equals the way the enum values here so this is thrown an error because the enum.parse method returns in objects because you could be cast into any enum. So simply cast this return value of the parse function to a waveform and then it's assigned. Now let's test this by creating a message box dot show call and inside of it we can say something like the button you pressed was and then this dot waveform. 
but before we can actually use this method we need to go into the for each so where we assign the generic controls but control dot click plus equals so assigning the delegate and the wave button underscore click so whenever a, a button is clicked it's gonna call this event handler here so let's try it out click the sign button the button you press was sign the square the button you press was square saw and so on triangle and finally noise so we've got that working but how do we actually there's no way of telling what what the waveform is because we don't want this message box to be in the final program so we need to identify what the wave button the oscillators or what button's been clicked last in the oscillator so to do this simply put back color for the sign button so this is once the program starts the default value of an enum is the first or what's assigned to zero so in this case sign so once we start the program the default waveform is sign so we can identify this by putting the background color to yellow for the sign button and ahead of this we can do a for each and a button for so for each button in this dot controls or this dot controls of the type button because we'll be adding some x some other controls like labels and such in each oscillator so again we don't want to conflict anything we also use button here so we can use button other buttons and because say we click square straight after we start the program and the background color of sign is yellow so we don't want that we want it to be blank because if we just assign or make the background color of the square yellow then we're gonna have two buttons with the yellow background color so for each other button we want the other button to have a use visualize style back color set it to true this means if you look closely at the buttons the color it's not actually white it's more of a grayish just a, a default color i like to call it of each button so if we set the background color to white it actually look different than they are now so we can use the visual style back color and we actually want to make the background color of the button that's been pressed yellow so let's try this out now so we can see signs yellow here when we click square now the waveform is assigned to square the value of the square enum and the it's following the clicks so the yellow has been assigned to whatever button we've pressed last so now how do we apply this the waveform in the actual synthesis now back here in the basic synthesizer class all we need to do to apply the new oscillators we created is create a for each loop and for each oscillator oscillator in this dot controls of the type oscillator so we've only got one in one oscillator currently but we'll be adding more later when we add the other two so this is just sort of planning ahead but create the scope of this for each loop just above the block copy method and you see this is the sign algorithm that we created before what we want to do is switch the waveform of the oscillator a switch statement so oscillator.waveform and inside this it will allow us to, to decide what or detect what the oscillator's waveform so for each oscillator but we only have one currently so all this will do is decide that when we press a key what waveform to generate of the frequency here now I've got all the waveforms on the reference side in the previous part where we had all the algorithms and it'll be a bit tedious just copying them all over but I will do this off camera and all the information about these algorithms is available on the reference I put in the description so these are the implementations of the algorithms from the reference website I have in the description you can pause to go through them all there's are a few variables you have to declare before the switch statement for all these to work but here they all are and they are all working so feel free to pause and copy
and we can now test them. So, once we start the program, we'll be presented with our oscillator. So, sine, let's press V. It's a sine wave, we've heard that before. Now, let's try the square wave. Much different, much more. It's sort of harsh than the sine wave and the saw wave. Sort of a mix between them, the triangle wave. Sort of a calm tone and the noise which is just a load of random samples that make that, that static sound. So that is oscillator set up. All you need to do to add more is simply drag another oscillator onto the form, but unfortunately that won't really, it will just override the previous wave, because if you go over one oscillator, assign all the values, then go to the next oscillator, it's simply going to override them all. So in the next part, we'll be looking into mixing audio from multiple oscillators. But for now, there's one more thing I'd like to do before I end this part. And the final thing I want to do for this part of the series is to implement a way of assigning the frequency based on the key press, just like in Massive. So to do this, simply set frequency to unassigned and create a switch statement and switch the E dot key code, so the key of the event argument and we'll be casing the bottom row of keys on the keyboard, so Z to M, so ZX, C, V, B, N and M. And where we're going to be getting the frequency values is from this piano key frequencies table. We're going to be getting the C2 to C8, all these frequencies here, so we'll be going from C2, C3, C4, up to C5, which will be V, and then C6, C7 and C8. And here is the implementation for this. You can see that from key Z we're just starting the tens in the frequency and then we go keep increasing all the way up to key M where we're even in the thousands. You can tell there's a clear difference between the sound that will be generated from the frequency and each key corresponds to a different C note on a piano. So let's test this out. We'll start with the synthesizer and let's go from key Z all the way to key M on the sine wave. Now you can tell it's going higher in frequency each time. Let's try on the square wave. And the saw wave. As tell the frequency really affects what sounds produced on the saw wave and the triangle. Still quite a calm tone all the way through the spectrum of frequencies. And finally on the noise, this will have absolutely no effects because all the samples are generated randomly anyway. So Z to M. No effect whatsoever. So this has been the implementation of frequency on a different key press, so differentiating the frequency, and the implementation of multiple waveforms. In future parts we'll be looking at adding multiple oscillators and the ability to mix the audio and everything I mentioned from the previous part coming in further episodes. And that was part two of creating a digital audio synthesizer using C Sharp. Again I hope you've enjoyed and learned a lot from this and if so please leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on the wide range of content and tutorials I'll be uploading. Also check out my Patreon which contains links to all the other non-tutorial content I produce which I'm sure you'll enjoy. Links in the description and I'll see you in part three.